Hey guys, it's Kelly. Welcome back. Today I have a Sephora haul. So I'm going to share some products that I picked up recently. I've got a bit of everything. Skincare, hair, makeup. I picked up a lot of Charlotte Tilbury products that have been on my list recently. A few products I talked about in my purchase or pass videos, plus some replacements. And I'm really excited to say that today's video is in partnership with IGK and Sephora. So I'm gonna be sharing some IGK products in today's video, plus show you how I got this hair. And then of course, a haul with some beauty products I picked up at Sephora recently. So if you're new here, be sure to subscribe and let's go ahead and hop into it. So you probably already know that these Sephora Spring Savings event is going on right now. I did a video last week sharing a few recommendations. It's running from April 1st through April 11th, so we've got a few more days to shop if you wanted to pick up anything that I'm talking about in today's video. But let me start this haul with some of these IGK products. I filmed two kind of hair clips so you guys could see me using these products. Let me start with the products that I have in my hair today. So today, this is third day hair, so I needed to start with dry shampoo. So I used a bit of the first class charcoal dry shampoo first. And then before styling, I always like to put in either a leave-in conditioner, a heat protectant, something along that nature. So I used the Mistress Hydrating Hair Balm in my hair today before I went in and styled it. I wanted something kind of undone and simple today, just like some waves that look kind of like natural, like, you know, didn't try too hard. So I just kind of ran the iron through them, did not hold it in very long and then brushed them out. And then to stick with that undone look, I used the IGK Beach Club Volumizing Texture Spray to get a little bit more volume. My hair is naturally pretty fine. It can be very flat if I don't really use products. So this is nice to give it a little bit more body. And then the other day I filmed with the Good Behavior line. This is perfect if you like to like blow out your hair, which I normally do. So for my hair, most days I will dry it with the Dyson Airwrap, like once I get out of the shower, if I've washed my hair that day. And this is perfect for that. So step one, I used the Spirulina Protein Smoothing Blowout Balm. They say this is a keratin-like treatment with 72 hour frizz control and 450 degree heat protection. Now, I don't normally struggle with a ton of frizz because my hair is naturally pretty close to straight. However, I've been telling you guys about all these little hairs growing in around my scalp or like my hairline that have been like really curly recently and I cannot get them to lay down flat and this has made such a big difference for me. And like I said, I don't struggle with a ton of frizz normally, but the other day I had plans and I knew that day I was gonna be like in and out. I was planning to like go to the park, go to dinner, meet friends, and it was raining. And that is the one time that I really do get frizz is just if it's raining and really humid out. And I used all three of these products and by the end of the day, I wasn't frizzy at all. I was honestly shocked. So next, I used the prep spray. This is called the 4-in-1 Detangler. It has 24-hour frizz control, 450 degree heat protection, and is supposed to add shine. And then I styled my hair, and then I went in with the Good Behavior Spirulina Protein Smoothing Spray. This also is supposed to give you that keratin-like effect with 24-hour frizz control and 450-degree heat protection. I did this actually after I had styled my hair and then kind of like combed it out so I would get more of that sheen at the end of the style. I do get questions a lot about good products for frizz. I would definitely check this out. And it's the perfect time if you're shopping the spring savings event to get them with a little bit of a discount. So let me share with you guys some other products that I picked up recently. Actually, this one, before I forget, is another hair care product, and I'm dying to try these. I haven't tried them yet, but I finally picked up the T3 rollers. You guys, I was not sure about these. I was really back and forth about picking these up because I do have a set of hot rollers that I've had since I was in high school, but the, the barrel size is so small, and that's not really what I'm after, so I really wanted to pick these up because this is a bigger barrel size. Now, it comes with four, and they are different sizes, but they're still quite a bit larger, whereas a lot of hot rollers that I you could find at like the drugstore or something, they tend to be the pretty small rollers, which is a cool effect, but with my hair length, I, I like something bigger like this. And these ones have just been really hyped up for a while, so I've been wanting to get them. I finally was like, okay, this is the time. I, I wanna say it was like Stephanie Leda, who I would always see using these, 
And when I did used to use rollers really consistently back in the day, I loved the effect that there's something about that beautiful like 90s-esque effortless hair with a lot of volume that I really do love. So I'm thinking I might try to film something with these either for my TikTok or my Instagram. Maybe both. Let me know. But I'm really excited to try these out. Let me know if you use hot rollers. I feel like they're just a really simple product. And you can kind of keep them in while you get ready. So I'm really, really glad that I finally picked these up. Also, I said I picked up something new that I've been wanting. I grabbed this. So this is from Danessa Myricks. It's the Yummy Skin Glow Serum. Let me use my nail scissors to cut this. Ooh, almost cut myself to cut this open. So she has the new Yummy Skin line. And I've heard a lot of people talking about it. I cannot get this box open. Okay, there we go. There's also a foundation in this line, but I'm on a foundation no buy, so I could not pick that up. But I've really been into this type of product recently, so I was like, let me go for it. So it is like a primer. Essentially, I suppose you could use it for anything. Let me see. Oh, this is not really what I thought it would look like, actually. I kind of thought... Oh, this is really different than I was expecting. I don't think you're really going to see much on camera because this is more like a serum serum. Why did I think that this was a fully like glowy primer like the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter? Okay, this was actually not at all what I was expecting, but in hindsight, that was definitely my own fault. I should have known that, but we'll see. I've been super into this glowy type of product anyways, even when it's not, even though this isn't what I was expecting, I still love this type of product. So we'll see. You guys know, I picked up the contour balm from Danessa Myricks when they first came into Sephora. I didn't love that personally, but I've just heard so many great things about the brand that I've been wanting to try more. So we shall see how this one is. I mean, even on my hand, like it feels really smooth. I think I was just expecting something that was more shimmery. And that's my own fault, I guess. I should have known because even when I was looking at the shades, there were only two and I was like, that's kind of surprising. I would have expected more options, but since it's essentially clear, that makes complete sense. But my hand feels really smooth. Okay, so I said I got some things from Charlotte Tilbury. Actually, we'll hold that. I'm getting into fragrance. I don't know. I've really been liking fragrance recently, but finding cruelty-free fragrances is a little bit challenging. It's kind of limiting. And this one in particular, if you're on TikTok, especially on like fragrance TikTok, I've seen so many people recommend this, so I had to get it. I put it back in the box for this video, but I've had it out on my vanity for a little while now. I've used this a lot. This is the Seven Virtues Vanilla Wood Fragrance. Now, I did actually go into Sephora and smell this before I purchased it because I have made that mistake before by buying a fragrance without smelling it. So I went into stores to see, and this smells incredible. Oddly, I'm not normally a big vanilla person when it comes to fragrances. I feel like it's tricky to find a vanilla that feels mature. It's tricky to find a vanilla that feels dynamic. A lot of them just feel so one noted. I feel like I'm spraying like a body spray from Bath and Body Works. It just makes me... It, it transports me back to like my middle school self using a body spray. You know, very few vanilla fragrances feel complex and this one does. So let me read you the notes. The top note is pear, the heart note is rose, and the base notes are vanilla and caramel. So I don't really feel like you get smacked in the face with that really strong vanilla. You almost smell it and you're like, what is this? Okay, I can smell a little bit of vanilla, but it smells very mature. It's like a mature take on vanilla. I also really love the bottle here. I also, at Sephora, love the Skylar fragrances. The bottle reminds me a bit of the Seven Virtues one. So I, I sniffed a few of their other scents last time I was in store, and I might pick up a few more. I don't know. I probably don't need to. I have enough right now, but I'm definitely going through a fragrance phase. So this one smells very nice. If you're looking for cruelty-free options, the Seven Virtues has a lot of really good scents. Okay, so this next product, this is kind of pricey, and I wouldn't normally spend this on an eyeliner, but for some reason, this is one that I have had like on my loves list for a long time. I've talked myself out of buying for a while, but I've still just been pining over this eyeliner. And it's the shade Pillow Talk from Charlotte Tilbury. And I do have it on today. 
So the tone of this is kind of like a plum. And I would always watch the Charlotte Tilbury eyeshadow tutorials on her Instagram or even her YouTube. And in so many of them, she would use this kind of like beautiful plum purpley eyeliner. And I, I have never had something quite this tone in my collection. I've had some that pull a little bit more purple, but none like this where it's still quite neutral, so it's not intimidating. Like, it almost looks like a brown. Even on the eyes, it's not like it's jumping out at you as purple, but it has enough of that tone to it to make your eye color pop. So I'm wearing it today smeared onto my upper lash line, and then I did a pretty thin layer in my waterline, and I feel like it's making the like green undertones in my eyes pop a bit. I've actually used this one quite a few times, and I'm really enjoying it. One thing I will say, I wish that high-end eyeliners always had a smudger brush on the end. That's something that is common on drugstore eyeliners, but not as much on high-end ones, and I always like that smudging step. Yes, I have plenty of brushes I can do that with, and I do, I do usually use a brush, but I just feel like it would be so much easier if I could turn this over, smudge it out, because I want it to be kind of smoky like that. But I finally bought this eyeliner. I feel like now I can recreate a lot of those Charlotte Tilbury looks that I've been wanting to make. Okay, one more Charlotte Tilbury product that kind of fits in that category of I've been wanting to try this, so I finally picked it up one of the cream eyeshadows. So this, again, is in the shade Pillow Talk. Okay, you guys, I don't have a ton from Charlotte Tilbury. Actually, well, my collection is growing, but in, I feel like I buy everything in Pillow Talk. When I don't know what to get, I'm like, this is the most, this is her most famous one, so I'll get Pillow Talk. I have that with the lipstick, the lip liner, this, the eyeliner. I'm always like, that feels safe. So this, the name of this is Eyes to Mesmerize. Now, I actually just put these little press-on nails on today. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you saw me talk about these on my story. These are from Glamnetic. So I'm testing these out. I put them on, honestly, like an hour ago. And I'm thinking to myself now, wow, it's going to be hard to apply this. They're not super long. But with these type of products, I do prefer applying them with my finger. I have worn this once, maybe twice. Have I worn it twice? I think I've only worn this once. And I did like it, but I was a little bit underwhelmed by it. I was like, hmm, I was almost waiting for more. I'm like, I need more sparkle, more something. It's very moussey, it blended out effortlessly, but it didn't have as much sheen as I was kind of expecting. So I'm almost wondering if I should have picked up a different shade. Cause I know so many people love these and rave about them. So. Let me know if you have a favorite from this line, or maybe if you think they're not worth it, let me know that also. But I'm gonna keep testing this out. The color was really pretty. What I ended up doing when I wore it the other day, I didn't think it was sparkly enough. It wasn't what I was after. So I took my go-to, my tried and true, let me grab it, Urban Decay Space Cowboy. I've had this for a while. This is the old packaging. They now have like square plastic packaging, but this is always my go-to. I'm actually going to link this down below also, but whenever my eyeshadow look is not sparkly enough or I'm like, no, I want more, I will grab this, tap it over top, and it saves the day. So these two together looked really pretty, and I wore the eyeliner. It was pretty cool. It felt very similar to something I would see Charlotte Tilbury do on one of her models, which is what I was going for. So then I got this as a point perk. I don't know if this is still a point perk available right now, but I figured... I would try it. It is the Magic Serum Crystal Elixir from Charlotte Tilbury. I really can't open anything right now with these nails, but isn't this such cute packaging? I'm really excited to try this out. I have not used it yet, but anything, again, anything glowy, hydrating for the skin, that's kind of my weakness, so I'm excited to try this one. Ooh, another point perk that I grabbed. I'm actually already almost done with this, but this is so good I wanted to mention it. This is the sunscreen from Sunday Riley. This is called the Light Hearted Broad Spectrum SPF 30. I think eventually I'll probably buy a full size of this. Like, I actually like it that much. I've got some other sunscreens to work through first, but this is one I will repurchase. So... It's a combo of uh, physical and mineral sunscreen. No, that's the same thing. Chemical and physical sunscreens. I wish it was SPF 50, but 30 I, I can work with. And this, when I first apply it, it seems like it's gonna have a white cast. It almost has that like lilac color to it, 
But on myself, it goes away pretty quickly. Let me know your experience with this, especially if you have a deeper skin tone. Do you feel like the white cast sticks around? Because I know that can be a problem sometimes. I experience it at first, but it goes away pretty quickly. And this wears so well under makeup. Sunscreen can be tricky because they're either too greasy or they pill or they're too heavy. This, it smells kind of sunscreeny. Like I can tell I'm applying a sunscreen both in the texture and the smell, but once it sit for a bit, it's not like I have this really sticky sunscreen like film on my face. It wears really well under makeup. So that's what I have on today underneath some foundation and a lot of other products, but I think it wears very well. Okay, replacements. I got a skincare replacement for Pharmacy 10% Niacinamide Night Mask. And this I mentioned in my recommendations video. This is so good, you guys. I'm not even like that close to finishing up my night mask. I thought that I was closer, which is why I repurchased it already. But then when I was sharing it in that video with you guys the other day, I'm like, well, I really only used probably like half or maybe two thirds of this, but I don't want to be without this. And I, I thought I was closer. I normally don't buy backups, especially not that early on, but I thought I was like about to finish it up. Maybe I'm delusional, but I don't want to be without this because I really, really love it. So they say that you can use this at night over your moisturizer or as your moisturizer. I've done both. It is so thick and heavy and emollient. That is what I like at night. I want to be just like, I don't want to say a sticky mess, but I want to be like super shiny, glowy, like slathered on and then just go to bed and then wake up with great skin. And that's what happens every time I use this. It is so smoothing. It is so hydrating. If you didn't want to splurge on this one, I do also really enjoy the niacinamide serum from The Ordinary. It is like a fraction of the price. I don't think they're dupes. I don't think that they really do the same thing because this is a mask. It's like also hydrating. It's moisturizing, whereas that is just one step and you would also need to moisturize. But if you still want the niacinamide benefits on a budget, I still really do love the niacinamide serum. The only thing is, the other day, I was reaching into my vanity and it fell out into my sink and shattered everywhere. So I had to say goodbye to my ordinary niacinamide serum, but I'm excited to have a backup of this mask. Okay, one more replacement this mascara so this is the wander beauty mile high club mascara this is just one of my favorite mascaras of all time and it is so ironic because the first time i tried this probably two years ago i was pretty indifferent about it i was like you guys it's a good mascara but it didn't change my life but my mascara preferences have changed a bit and i i'm also having different problems with mascara than i used to have so let me explain when I was a little more indifferent about this, I liked a super bold lash. Like I didn't care if it was clumpy. I didn't care if it was over the top. As long as I had extreme volume and a lot of length, I loved it. I'm not into that look on myself as much anymore. I want my lashes to look a bit more natural, but emphasized, elongated. And that's what this does. And I didn't used to have as much of a transfer problem with mascara, but on this eyelid, not this one, this is my good eye. This is my bad eye, it's a little more hooded. It gets a little more hooded every day and I'm starting to get more transfer here. This is one of the only mascaras that I found that doesn't transfer. Even ones that say like transfer resistance, a lie. Except for this one, because this is a tubing formula. Like this is not coming off your eyes. I was wearing this all winter because in the winter is when I get the most transfer because I think, you know, just with the snow, with the breathing in, in the cold and having all of that moisture, it would just transfer so much up here, down here. So all winter on the days where I knew I was going to be like outside and I was going to need something heavy duty to resist smudging, this is what I would reach for. So uh, long story short, I finished that up and I replaced it. I also, did I mention this in my, re, in my Sephora recommendations video? I don't think I did, but... This is one of my favorite mascaras. It's pricey, but now is the time to get it during the sale. All right, those are some products I picked up at Sephora recently. Thank you so much to IGK and Sephora for working with me on today's video. This was so much fun. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing a bit of those hair demos, plus some products I picked up recently. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next one. Bye.